So this is the alternator that came with the motor and I haven't hooked it up and I did not connect it to the batteries because the cable lengths are different because our old alternator sat on the starboard side and this one's on port. I saved the Balmar. This is a Balmar 150. We did a video on the putting the serpentine kit on the Perkins and all that. So if you want to watch that, go back and check it out. Uh, this one's like a 70 or 75 amp internally regulated alternator. This one's externally regulated. I have a MC614 uh, charge controller underneath a lazarette where the batteries are. So I've got to take this thing off and uh, see if I can fit this Balmar on there. So the guy at the beta place told me it would fit. So. Hey, we're Jenny and Rich, and our stowaway is Twitchell the Marina Cat. We've been documenting the refit of our 1977 Tayana 37 Ramble On for the past several years. We're proud to say we've done 99.9% .9 of the work ourselves. We've gained a lot of knowledge and experience in the process, and we're happy to pass that wisdom on. So we just received the new alternator for the uh, Beta Marine, and we got the uh, Balmark 250 amp XT series alternator. Uh, the old one on the Perkins doesn't fit because it's a single foot. This one's a dual foot. Got the 618 charge controller with it. Uh, some temperature sensors, hardware. Had to get a new locking arm or adjustment arm. This one's blue. I'm not happy about that. Um, and then I had to get a extended harness because the, the old harness that's in there right now, uh, the alternator was on the starboard side and the beta's on the port. So I need a longer wiring harness, but other than that, finally got this thing getting ready to put it in. So an, another casualty of the shed fire was my big battery cable crimper. So, um, I also need to order for the, I think I need like two gauge minimum, um, based on the length, uh, alternator cable for this 250 amp alternator. So positive negatives. Once I get this installed, I can measure up for those, order that and, uh, see how they turn out and get those installed. And then we can start making some amps. So today we're gonna to install this on this. And I love that it's red. It's so cool. So this is the 250 amp Balmar uh, alternator. And then I'm gonna to have to figure out the charge controller and all that shenanigans, so. Yeah, so then, and then I have to sort and figure out all this garbage there that went to the old alternator. The old one, this is the 70 amp uh, internally regulated factory alternator. It's like, comes standard. So that, I guess you can order them from the factory with uh, Balmars, but the, the beta order, uh, we couldn't get anything above like 170 amps, I think, or something like that on this 43. It's just what they, it's just what beta offers. Oh, I need a Allen wrench. Alternators should be sized to about 25%, I think is what they say. 25% of your total capacity. So we got 250, so we got a little wiggle room. This thing comes with a little, little bolt set for the new, um, for the new alternator uh, mount. And I'm assuming that this arm, this new blue arm is going to work where it needs to. I don't know. I might have to use the red arm and send that one back. I ordered that arm because the single foot kit, um, when I tried the old Perkins alternator, it didn't fit. The old arm uh, didn't, didn't work. So maybe the old red arm will work. I don't know. I've got to get this thing put on first. And then we'll see. Okay. So there's a bushing here that has to be. <laughs> this bolt doesn't fit through this hole because there's a bushing back here and it looks like belt alignment and stuff is going to be, isn't going to be some drop in install. I need a freaking hammer. Right here, there's a bushing. 
and that was what the old one rode on. This bolt does not go through there. So I got to tap this thing out and figure out what the heck I got to do to make this thing line up. All right, so after hodgepodging together a series of uh, bushings and washers to shim this thing up, uh, I think I've got this alternator lined up with uh, getting the belt parallel on all three on all three pulleys. Um, the problem is is that uh, obviously this little janky factory arm for the old beta alternator is not going to work. Um, also, this thing here, there's just no way this is going to work. The arc and the radius aren't even close. So I'm going to have to pattern something up and see if I can either have it fabricated. Um, I do need, I'll check on Monday and see beta beta over on the East coast has an arm they offer. And I was going to ask if they could maybe, I don't know, photocopy it and send and PDF it over to me and see if it's even close to what this is as far as, uh, the arc because it needs to be like kind of tight where it is i don't have a lot of swing room here i can get about as close as this to the engine block this is the old belt that came with the original alternator that angle is pretty close as far as uh the swing of the alternator to get it over here um in here um all these alternators have a little floating bushing uh, it's called a drift bushing and you can see on this one, it's got a little split in it and that thing moves in and out to make fine adjustments in, uh, in the way the alternator bolts up this thing, the only, the actual bolt clamping force is directed on the front foot. The back one is just to balance it, um, for the, uh, belt tension. So over here I got so you got the drift that's the split bushing in the back right there and then a uh, three-quarter inch bushing and then a three-eighths bushing with a washer and that gets the belt alignment I, I straight edged it and all the pulleys line up so yeah the belt is running parallel on all the on all the pulleys so anyway I gotta mess around making an arm or see if beta can get me one that fits a Balmar alternator. Incidentally, this, this bolt here, uh, it goes into the water neck here where the thermostat housing is and water will start leaking out of here if you don't leave it tight. So just tighten this up until I can figure out what to do about the adjusting arm. I guess I was mistaken thinking that it would be an easy drop in, you know, installation, get the thing, yay, fired up, let's go to work. Uh, even with the Perkins, good grief, go back and look at that video. Um, I had to do welding and fabrication on an adjusting arm for that thing just to make the Balmar work on a kit that's supposed to be a, basically a drop-in kit also for the new water pump and the, the serpentine belt and all that. So even getting the alternator mounted on that, I should have known better. So I'll make a cardboard template and see what I can come up with and I'll make some phone calls on Monday. So this part's to be continued. Also, I found out this is a case grounded alternator and they only make the XT series in case grounded. And the old one I had was an isolated ground that had its own wire that went all the way back to the battery. This one is grounded through the chassis and then goes to the grounding point on the um, engine block where the battery cable hooks to and then goes back to the battery bank. So it's a little different there. I guess it should, I don't know, it should be fine. It's case grounded, isolated ground. I don't know what the, it seems like it's a six and one and a half dozen to the other. I don't think Balmar would sell a 250 amp alternator if it wasn't suitable to uh, charge at that rate through a case grounding. So we'll see.